bits and bites. This is Kakujo. Uh, let's talk Ujo. I don't wait. Okay, so uh, the New Year's coming past. It's 2015. I wanted to get a video out on New Year's Day or the New Year's Eve, but if you've been following my Facebook and Twitter whining, uh, I've been. I decided on the 30th that I was going to do like this 20-panel comic and try to get it done in time for New Year's. I already knew I wasn't gonna make the deadline, but just I for those three days after that, you know, I, I uploaded it in a partially completed format, like uh, five minutes before the the ball dropped on New Year's. But then it, I finished it since then. But it was a tough job. Like this is it's what like real you know manga artists do over in Japan all the time, from what they claim anyway. It's just like constantly. Like I wake up, I I put a piece of bread in my face, and then I I draw. And then I go to bed, and then I dr uh, wake up, and I more bread, and then I draw some more. Of course, you know, then the first day I had to, to take care of Lily, so that was another bump in the road. But it was fun! Go check it out over at kakujamics.com. It's a long one. It's about New Year's and Zelda. Um, but here we are now, anyway. Uh, what, I mean, what is there to talk about? Top 10 games? I, you know, I'm not like a big reviewer pundit. <clears throat> pundit? Is that, is that it? Uh... So I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. I'm just gonna get this over with real quick. Number ten, Little Big Planet Three. What? No, editing. We do not. We do not have time for this. I have been working so long and so hard, and we're not doing. We're not doing this. I'm not. Do I'm not doing it. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, number ten is Little Big Planet Three. If you saw my Let's Play of it, I wasn't too crazy about it. Um, just the multiplayer aspect of it. In the Let's Play, I'd only played with another person, at least one other person at all times, and I had problems with it. But then, you know, I had played some of the single just by myself, and it's actually really fun. It, it does lose a bit of its its indie game appeal, its homemade cardboard cutout aesthetic, which I really liked about the first one. Um, I did notice there were some licensed songs in the third game, which was nice, but, uh, yeah, it, it's solid, but it's, it, it's on the list, just not very high. Number nine, Shovel Knight. Number nine is Shovel Knight. It, uh, it was a fun, solid game. I didn't really grow up with Mega Man or Castlevania or the like, so I didn't have that nostalgia veil over my face. Uh, not to say that nostalgia is an illegitimate you know, a reaction for a game to elicit in a person. It's valid. You know, I'd, I'd buy a game just on nostalgia alone. I, I would. You know, I, I, that's why I'm interested in games like uh, you know, Freedom Planet, uh, <sighs> Binding of Isaac, other games and stuff. Just, but yeah, I, I kind of approached it in a, in a in a less influenced kind of way. And it's solid. It's got fun moments. Nothing too memorable, honestly. Like it was a cute story. Um, solid, I guess, yeah, solid. Plus the Trapple King dance. That was good, that was it, um, number nine. Number eight, Lethal League. Number eight is Lethal League, uh, I'll tell you now, just full disclosure, uh, any of these, these, like, multiplayer competitive games, they're gonna get a little lower on the list, simply because I don't have any people to play with locally around my skill level. So, like, with Lethal League, I can only play with people online, which is fine, but, you know, me, I don't... I'm not super into the competitive online thing. People get angry. It's just like when people are in cars, you know? It's like you see people and you're just walking around, but then when you online, you just see, like, Candyman or Sonata, and you just wanna... they, they say mad, mean things to you. Uh, but, you know, maybe not a... you might not consider it a legitimate reason to bump a game down, but this is my top ten. I don't have friends. <laughs> so it's a, it's a I believe the league's good. Um, it's it's very tight. It's very tight. It's a pretty simplistic game. It's like Smash Bros. plus like baseball and rock paper scissors. Um, and it's it's uh, it's fun. They're still updating and all that, so that's respectable. But it's just uh, not something that I can fully enjoy. Uh, not being able to to play with other people that often. I mean, even on even online matches, I get it's. Uh, a lot of the times, I just kind of mow them down. Not that I'm MLG or anything, just, you know. I just know how to... What, the counter, the... Parry. I know how to parry. Learn how to parry and then play me. Number seven, Towerfall Ascension. Towerfall Ascension. That is an amazing game. It doesn't even have online play, so there's not even really that option for me. However, Towerfall Ascension is like, it's so, uh... It, there's a lot more chaos in the, in the gameplay. It's it's less like like okay. I made a, a blog post on, uh, on the accompanying big giant comic I made where I, where I kind of explained what my top ten was there and like full top ten format actually. But uh, I'll just say yeah, it's it's like Lethal League is like checkers 
on crack with knives. And then like Towerfall Ascension is like sumo wrestling and chess and hungry hungry hippo. It's just like there's so much going on and there's so many different ways to kill people uh, and there's so you have to there's it's very hard to predict what your opponent's going to do. So even like my fam, the you know the girls like when we play they can pull off a few victories and it's it's fun. So uh it's just it's a very tight, very well-made game. Number 6, Transistor. <laughs> Transistor. That uh, that was a fantastic one. That it it had story. It had all the music. That was just just a oh, cradle. It was wrapped in a toga, a toga of music, and it was good. Um, my favorite part of it though was the game mechanics. Just just the com combinations of the different abilities. You know, you could use every every aspect as the main the main attack, or you could use it to modify another main attack. It just it all. It was so interesting, and it. I, I kept getting the feeling like they were gonna do like an Assassin's Creed with it. You know how like when they they made Assassin's Creed, I th think they were testing out a new uh, gameplay system to implement in another Prince of Persia. But then Assassin's Creed got so popular, they continued on with that and Nyx uh, Prince of Persia. I think that's what happened anyway. And it kind of feels like that because the system is just so new and so uh, dare I say revolutionary that I can't believe that they put it in a game so short. Like, and I can't believe that I I can't accept that they're just gonna let that 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 system fall to the wayside. Like, make a transistor too. You know, that, I'm, that sounds awesome. Number five, Battle Block Theater. Battle Block Theater. Now that, I only played two episodes online on the uh, gaming channel because Narun uh, is kind of hard to tie down for those kinds of things. <laughs> um, but it's a fun game. More more appropriately to say, uh, Battle Block Theater is very fun if you find the right person to play with. You, if, if you're really, really particular about collecting all the hidden things, find someone who's also like that. Um, when I play with Tenley and Narun, uh, they're more about kind of just getting through and experiencing the story, which is a completely legitimate, legitimate way to play a game. Um, being all about the story, sometimes I go through phases where I'm like that. But, you know, with Battle Block Theater, I'm all about collecting all the gems, collecting the hidden yarn ball, unlocking the faces and the things, just, it's all about the, the collection, the climb. Maybe I'm just a little 12-year-old boy because of that, but, uh, but yeah. When I found someone to play, uh, that online and they, we, we played like that together, Wolfish, it was very fun. It was, <laughs> you get into this kind of flow. Uh, and you get this, this sense of camaraderie, just hitting all the marks, throwing each other, catching each other, throwing each other into puddles and watching the other person dissolve into nothing. It was, it's all fun. It's all good fun. It's very simple. Uh, and the narrative from Stamper TV, uh, don't look at his stuff if, you, if you're interested in family-friendly fun, but, you know, you should know what you're getting into, I guess. He's hilarious, and his, his narration is, is awesome in this game. But, you know, yeah. Number four, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I'm just messing with him at this point. Get over it. Uh, the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, I played the original for, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 hours. Like, a good amount of time to, to play with the game, but I wasn't, like, super gaga about it. But when Rebirth came out, it just took all of it, gave me more, wrapped it in a 16-bit package. Uh, it added the ability to do, to do uh, you know, seed, seed gen, uh, saving frickin' runs. That's very important to me because just, like, seriously, if you wanna, if, if, if a dev out there just wants to make a game called, like, Parenthood Simulator, where it's basically you're like you're you're totally like a, an RPG guy, like you're just like a, a Link ripoff. You're going through like low rule, low rule. Oh wait, no, that's in that 3DS game. Mid rule, and uh, you know every literally every five minutes you hear, Dad, Dad, can I have a snack? And just it's good. It's good that they implemented that basically. Uh, so yeah, Rebirth's filthy. It's uh, it's gory. It's stylized though, and it's just building your character and seeing what kind of just monstrous, just amalgam of wretched things you can create uh, with your of yourself is just it's so much fun. Number three, Super Smash. I like pee you. I did. I, I didn't mean that. I just I. You, when you do improv, you just gotta throw a phrase out there. Please don't hack me, Nintendo Nine Gag fanboys. Mmm. Melee was good, uh, Brawl was floaty, and it took a lot of the competitive nature out of it. You all know the story, but but Smash 4, that was, I love Smash 4. It, the roster is incredible, the graphics, let's face it, they matter, it's, it's so, oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, and actually having an online, an online mode, an online mode that frickin' works too! I just, it's not like Brawls where it's like, it's laggy, 
you just kind of press this button. It like, oh my God. Playing online mode in Brawl was like setting in a white little room, like a white little waiting room with like one chair. And then there's like another chair over here. And there's one of those little, little, little mini little kids tables that you have at doctors with the little strings that go like this. And you got to move the little balls over there, but it's being played with by like this little gnarly golem clown. And every once in a while he looks over at you and he's like, ah! that's what that was like. Uh, but this one's much better. This one you go in, you got options. It's so easy, you know? It is just, I'm so glad that Nintendo's getting on board with the whole online thing. Number two, Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8. Can't hate on that. Uh, the formula isn't particularly revolutionized. They added sideways wheels. But the graphics, right? <laughs> they expanded the roster a bit. Um, my favorite thing about it, though, is the online. It, and they got these points, you know, like you start off with like a thousand or whatever. And every time, if you get like, you know, fifth place or above, you get at least one point or more and you climb the ranks and that's how they kind of lump you in with other people of your skill level. And it's just fun, like, uh, apparently they did an update, did an update to where it's really hard to climb the ranks and people are mad about that, it's less inclusive and all that, but I mean, I'm good enough. <laughs> so, no complaints here. I'm extremely pleased with the fact that they put more emphasis on skill versus luck. You know, uh, I've noticed that red shells don't have laser accuracy anymore. Uh, getting like a, a, getting three red shells float, float, circling around you, you have to be like further back than second place to get it now, which is fantastic. And then the super horn. Oh, the super horn! You, the blue shell isn't an auto kill anymore. It's not a well. There goes my prac. There goes my training. There goes everything I worked for. I guess I'm just gonna die now. See ya. <laughs> My only complaint is the same complaint I've had with every Mario Kart since the DS version, um, or after the DS version, is that they don't bring back mission mode. Going around collecting the coins or killing, you know, fight, be dead, and then King Boo, you gotta beat him. That was so fun. Bring it back, Nintendo. Number one. Hyrule Warriors. Okay, this game came into my life out of nowhere. It wasn't on my radar. Like, I knew of it, so I guess it was on my radar. But I didn't want it. Like, I wanted it, but it wasn't, like, on the list. And, you know, it just... It was, uh... I like Dynasty Warriors. I played Dynasty Warriors a while back, and it's a fun kind of game, but, like, it's just so hard to really care when you're playing Dynasty Warriors, you know? It's just so easy to zone out. But this game... I played, like, ten minutes of it, and I went from, like... Huh. To... Ah! After like 10 minutes, it was, it was just, it's, it's got like, it's like Dynasty Warriors, but I care about the characters. It's like Zelda, but you don't have to slog through like an hour of, of intro exposition, which, you know, not hating, just, you know, when it, the, the kid thing again, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to like, listen to what happened. Like what's Ganon doing this time? Is he a ghost? Is he a pig? Is he a wizard person? Is he split up into four different pieces? I, you know, it's just hard with it. But one small cutscene, it was like five minutes, and then I was just, I had a sword in my hand, and I was just swinging it. It was just doing these circles, he did, like whip. He doesn't do that, you know, I'm in a chair. <laughs> the combos are great, the game is absolutely gorgeous, uh, and the fact that I can play as Fee and Midna, it's, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a gravy kind of game, you know? You, you play all these games that are so focused on trying to bring back the, the NES era difficulty. Like, it's, I get it, but Hyrule Warriors, it's really, it's my number one. It's so freaking good. Now, some of yourselves may be asking yourselves, uh, why isn't Nuclear Throne or Action Hank or whatever on the list? It's because they're not officially released yet. Uh, they're in early access, and I I feel like it's kind of weird to add those to the list, considering like when they actually get officially released, then it's going to be weird. It's going to be awkward when I add them onto the next year's list, because the next year's list is going to see last year's list and be like, uh -huh. So yeah, keep an eye on Nuclear Throne, Action Hank, Cuban Me, Starbound, and Broforce. That is just five, my five early access games of the year. So that's that. Mmm. Resolutions. I don't know. I don't really like doing New Year's resolutions. I feel like it's more of a tradition to make a resolution and then not do it. So every time someone asks me, I'm like, don't be fat. I don't know. I'm just not going to do it. If I say it's a resolution, it's out the door already. So yeah, I don't know. I guess just try to be more sociable. Be less afraid of collaborating with other creators. Because I like in 2014, I had a few people reach out to me and say, hey, let's do this. And I really wanted to. Um, I had even some some bigger names reach out and say, hey, you know, want to do a video together? And at first I'm like, oh, awesome. This is like, this is going to, you know, help me. And then like, I'm immediately just like, this is, it's happening. 
No, I'm like a kind of afraid of success because you know, I have amazing followers. You guys are incredible. Like I I get to make videos and comics and what have you and you guys are so nice. You guys you guys I don't know. You know how it goes. You get bigger and you get haters and I know it's part of it. It shouldn't be part of it, I don't think, but you know, you, you get like someone in an interview room and you're like, "Hey, welcome." Welcome to Corp Corp. Uh, just a heads up, every Friday we have accounting come in uh, and tell you that you're fat and that your voice is annoying. There are no benefits. You just kind of do that. Uh, and maybe you get a paycheck. Uh, you know, I guess really you have to do it for the love of it. <laughs> just, and if you get money from it, then there it is. You know, you can eat beef bologna instead of regular bologna. You know, beef bologna is twice the price. I have to care about these things. I'm an adult. So I guess really I should say thank you Bits and Bytes. Thank you everyone who's commented, liked, faved, shared, subscribed, uh, Patreon pledged, commissions. Thank you all so much. The year has had its ups and downs, but it's overall been a very satisfying year. It's been a year of growth. And really at the end of the year, how can you complain about that? Other than not having beef bologna. And a very big shout out to uh, developers who, you know, gave me shout outs for videos I did of theirs. You know, the Nuclear Throne team have been very supportive. They're, they're, you know, Rami, um, his, he, he runs kind of like the more businessy side of it. it, it the way he, he handles, like, you know, PR and all that kind of stuff is just great. I, I'm sure it takes a ton of energy. Like I, like, I make this kind of video. You know what I'm going to do after this video? I'm going to go sit down and I'm going to stare at the wall like this until my brain stops being introverted and overwhelmed. But Rami does this like all the time and he, he finds the time to do everything and then be all like, you know, hey, see what this weirdo Kakujo made, you know? It's helped it's helped me out quite a bit, so I appreciate that. And of course, a very large thank you to Tenorio, my girlfriend. Um, she's kind of the breadwinner here, you know? I mean, she, she really is. I mean, it's great that I'm finally starting to make enough money to at least cover the expenses that it takes to run Kakujomics every month. Uh, but yeah, if not for her patience and, and her, her support, like, I wouldn't be able to do this. There just wouldn't be... There wouldn't really be much of a Kakujomics. And of course, thanks to my darling daughter, Lily. Uh, she's precocious. She's capricious. She... Capri Sun? She's... Very funny. You know, she's a she's a typical four-year-old, you know? She, she screams, she laughs, she poops, she... Throw, she says surprise like at everything she literally like will just like say dad look at me and she'll kind of kick her leg and then I'll, I have to say oh good job or else like I'll turn around and then she's like drawing on the walls that's how they work for some reason but yeah I, I think she's made me a better person you know kids they make you either grow up or they make you run away and thank goodness I've found it in me to not do that I guess not that I not that I want to I haven't thought about it Let's move on. So, uh, what what are some of your resolutions? What what are your top games? Uh, any l things on my list that you agree with? Disagree with? What do you what do you want? What do you want from me? These are my games. I like them. You go play Destiny and Titanfall. I don't know. I'll try it. I haven't played it. Probably. I'm sure they're good games. Just haven't played them. I ain't got an Xbox One. You want to send me an Xbox One? I'll probably add it to the list. Fair trade, I think. Ah, but going into 2015, we have things to look forward to. Lily is going to be starting full-time school, I think. Is kindergarten full-time or, do they, or they, do they do half days? Anyway, later in the year, she's going to be joining that, which means, because right now she's in preschool and she goes three days a week for two hours. <laughs> and it's like, I get back, I get my coffee, I maybe record like two videos and then it's like time to go pick her up. But if, if it's what I think it's going to be, kindergarten means she's going to be going five days a week, seven hours a day. Oh my god, I'm gonna be making so many videos and comics, it's gonna be stupid. And it's gonna be- it's gonna- I've, I've been waiting for this since she was born. Like, I love her, and it's great and all, but like, Kakujomics, the comics and the videos and all that, that it is my calling! It, it fulfills my soul! I don't need the money- well, I do- I would, would like beef bologna, but! It fulfills the soul, and I want to just keep doing it, and this just means I can do more of it. So hopefully, you know, this will give me more time to plan out a schedule, to create more interesting content rather than just, you know, taking a series and then, I don't know, just going on a, a indie game Tumblr and be like, yeah, it looks okay, let's do that. You know, I want to I want to be able to, uh, to increase the quality of my work for you. So in lieu of being able to afford daycare, kindergarten, it's going to, I think it's going to be good. I think I've rambled on long enough. Uh... Everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching all the time. Thanks for looking at the comics. Thanks for 
th things. Thank you. <laughs> wouldn't be here. I really wouldn't be here without you. Wouldn't be here. You get, you get me? Wouldn't be here. Bye! Have a fun year! Hopefully th it's good. I think it'll be good. Bye! Happy New Year!